On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools, empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Now, here's your host, Christine Upchurch. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Whether you're listening here in the Seattle area on KKNW AM 1150 or on Transformation Talk Radio anywhere around the world, or perhaps after the fact on ChristineUpchurch.com or on one of the 90 syndicated stations, this place that this show ends up, I'm really glad you've joined us here today because we're going to be talking about something we haven't talked about for a very long time on this show. We're going to be talking about the power of crystals. But before I get into that, I want to say a big hello to uh, Mr. Benny Mathers, who does his technological magic so that you guys can hear this wonderful conversation. Good morning, Benny. Hey there, Christine, and it's good to be back in the hot seat for you and today. It's so nice to have you back. We missed you, Benny. Oh, you are all missed as well, and I know we got pretty big uh, things to chat about and maybe rock and roll a little bit. Oh, that was a terrible pun. <laughs> Oh, I like that, baby. Well, it took me a of. moment to get it Oh, I guess I haven't had enough coffee this morning. Yeah, well, um, I know I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about our conversation today. We are talking to Kat Young, mm-hmm. and she's got a really interesting background. She's a producer, writer, and director in Hollywood television for more than a quarter of a century. Um, and she's worked on so many different shows, including General Hospital, um, Politically Incorrect, The People's Choice Awards, and on and on and on. And um, she has also worked at Universal Studios, and she's won an Iris Award for her work as a producer in of Mama and a Golden Acorn Award for Cleaning Up Your Act. So she's got this Hollywood stuff going on. But wait, there's more. She also has a Ph.D. in natural health, a doctorate in naturopathy, and a third doctoral degree in clinical hypnotherapy. I'm like, oh, my goodness, quite the overachiever. She helps people manage weight control, smoking cessation, behavior modification, stress reduction, patch does past life regression, as well as phobia management, which is really interesting. And she is the author of 15 books, including her most recent, The Art of Healing with Crystals. I would like to welcome our guest today, Kak Young. Hi, Kak. Welcome. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for having me on. I love speaking to Seattle. I went to school there, grew up in Bellingham, so I'm getting a vibe of the Northwest just as we speak. Yes, and I'm actually on Orcas Island right now, and I'm not too far away from Bellingham. So, yeah, it's kind of like sort of old home week in a sense for you then. Um, (laughs) So I'm fascinated by um, somebody who is clearly very intellectual. I mean, we're talking three doctoral degrees, and you've written about the healing power of crystals. Uh, You know, for some people, they they say, okay, there's something to acupuncture and chiropractic and, um, you know, maybe hypnotherapy, but crystals? Why have you written this book? Well, (laughs) thank you for asking. In the 80s, I was very fortunate to work with a man named Frank Alper. And Frank had been a scientist with IBM. Uh, Mm -hmm. In the early 60s and late 50s, uh, Bell Labs had developed the first laser using a crystal energy because crystal is the chemical substance which is so pure in its structure, so balanced, that it can transmit energy across it uh, in a perfect way. In other words, there's no distortion. That's ah. why we have crystal tips on our phonographs. You, your needle has a crystal tip, and that picks up the oscillations and the vibrations and translates that into sound because it is so perfectly structured and so pure. So I learned the science of crystals along with the metaphysics. And that really registered to me because I think that there's a lot of woo-woo that goes on out there. I like things that are really uh, developed and handled in in practical ways besides 
uh, an alternative way. And I was looking in my life at the time for some ways to balance a very, very heavy, demanding schedule in television with having a healthy uh, life as well. And, you know, those hours are brutal and the right. schedules are horrendous. So I was looking for ways to to find personal healing, and that's how I got into the healing world. I wanted to help myself and help uh-huh. others. Right, right. Um, so what is it about crystals that lend themselves to being utilized for healing? Well, uh, there are so many reasons. Uh, let me start with saying that there are three things about crystals that I have come to understand. They breathe, they are alive, and they vibrate. Okay, so, let's, let's, let, let's go back first. They breathe. They breathe. Everything is alive at the atomic level. Everything has life and energy. Nothing on this planet is dead. You look at a fork and you say, oh, well, that's dead. That's just Uh metal. No, no, it is alive. It has two things. It has its atomic structure and it has an intelligence attached to it, a a quark, if you will, that allows it to be a fork. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it, has and, to and vibrate, it, has to, it has to vibrate in a way that continues to look like a fork and behave like a fork, essentially. That is correct. That yeah. is correct. And then what holds that together? You know, there's got to be some kind of uh, intelligence or some mm-hmm. kind of guiding force that allows it to have that intelligence. Same thing with a cat or a cow. They all have an intelligence attached to them to be what they are and to be able to keep their form. Right. And the way that crystals work with us is that we have an electromagnetic field. Uh-huh. The crystal has an electromagnetic field. And when the two of those things get together, the human brain picks up those energies and then it stimulates a biochemical shift in the body that affects the physical body. Mm-hmm. So energy, I, I know that in, um, oh gosh, there's some scientists who talk about how healing actually begins in the energy field. There's some communication that occurs outside of the body that, that will trigger the biochemical reaction. So what you're talking about is that the, the energy of the crystal, the field from the crystal, is interacting with the field of the human being that triggers the process in the body. That is correct, and Dr. Weil talks about HES, the human energetic systems, and that is, those are the healing uh, uh, waves of the future. So the more we start to get in tune with our world and the vibrations around us, see, we're a very dense society, not just America but the world, because all of our ancestors used the power of crystals, used the power of stones, That's how jewelry got invented. It wasn't because it looked pretty on the body. No, because they used healing stones at certain points on the body, on the chest, on the ears. And these were uh, the the trigger points for the 12 meridians of healing throughout the body. We have forgotten in in the past few hundred years what our ancient ancestors knew and used. Stonehenge is created of electromagnetic blue stone that was brought in 200 miles over land in order to be erected in uh, the middle center of Somerset in Britain. It was brought uh-huh. from Wales because they tuned into the electromagnetic energy of the stones, and they used those places for ceremony and also for power. Uh-huh. I've, I've had the... Um privilege of going into Stonehenge. These days it, you have to get special permission to go into the circle as opposed to just seeing it from the outside, and it is an incredibly powerful place. Yes, yes. And uh, were you able to experiment with a pendulum over any of the ley lines there and see what happened, how it dances in your hand? Um, I'm not sure if we did that. I know we, we did some various energetic um, exercises. We were working with a healer over there in, um, in England. And uh, so, but I didn't. I don't know that we did anything with pendulums. So, what 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 happens there with pendulums? 
Well, the pendulum just reacts. I mean, you, you, usually you have to stabilize the pendulum and wait for it to pick up the electromagnetic uh, uh-huh. field. But there, it like dances around and turns circles. It does cartwheels on in your fingers. You have to oh. hold on to the pendulum. <laughs> I and mean, I thought, good grief, is there a wind? And it was just the energies there that reacted to the pen. And I tried several different pendulums. Um, uh-huh. You know, different, uh, a malachite, a rose quartz, an amethyst, and they all did the same thing. They were all like, yaha, we're home. Uh-huh. It was crazy. Okay, so you've mentioned pendulums. Um, tell me a little bit about working with that and how the different types of crystals at the tips of the pendulum, how that will affect um, how we work with them. Well, um, I use pendulums in in finding out where a person needs healing. So I uh-huh. use that as a tool, sort of like how you you douse for water. And, in fact, some of the um, – well, I live in a zone that we were harmed by the Thomas Fire, and right. most of the houses around me burned down. I had some oh. damage, but not all. So I've had a lot, we've had a lot of contractors, and I was out there, and a, 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 a guy in a, you know, in a big – yellow suit was out there with a hard hat and he had two dousing rods and i went out and i thought well now this is amazing my roofer came down the roofer came down and said what's going on i said well they're dousing for water it was the local water utilities company so i went out there and said that's uh that's pretty amazing you're doing he said yeah this is the most effective tool we have and so then of course i'm excited i invite him Uh in i show him my crystals blah 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 so we have this whole relationship now and my roofer was out there say can i try can i try it so these guys who had never been exposed to any kind of um, energetic fields were out there in the street playing with the with the dousing rods anyway so uh, it's the same way you douse for water uh how i determine whether a person needs help in body mind and soul or all three but where is the source of their angst where is it coming from but Uh with crystals i don't necessarily uh, use pendulums although i have a lot of them in various different crystal forms but i work with the crystals because um i have a relationship with my healing crystals over the years i have i clean them i cleanse them i take care of them and they create an amazing electromagnetic field possibly because I believe in them and in Mm -hmm. them and the force that they create, and secondly, because I work with that energetic field. I mean, that is the healing of the future. You're absolutely right, Christine. When we get in touch with the electromagnetic fields and the energetic fields outside of us that we can bring in and utilize for ourselves, and that's what the ancients knew. They all Mm -hmm. knew that stuff, and we've forgotten that. Or, you know, the conquerors have come in and said, no, no, you can't believe that anymore. That's hocus pocus. And yet we have monuments all over the world that are filled with these crystalline energies. Um, So when you use them for healing, it's a very personal relationship that you have with your crystals and your stones. And it becomes... We have to go to a quick break, but um, we want to hear a lot more about how we can utilize crystals for healing. Stay tuned for more with Kak Young here in just a few moments. Are you ready to attract abundance, release stress, look and feel younger? All from your smartphone? Get Pure Light, a free mobile app with audios that transmit powerful frequencies to shift anything in your life. Created by some of the world's top energy healers, these audios have created miracles, often quickly. Enjoy the latest in conscious technology and download Pure Light today. To find out more, visit purelightaudio.com. Are you traveling most of your day? Do you want to take Transformation Talk Radio with you anywhere you go? Well, guess what? There's an app for that. Just go to the App Store on your Apple device or the Google Play Store on your Android and search Transformation Talk Radio. Catch all of our live shows no matter where you are. Thanks for listening. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk radio. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. For centuries, spiritual traditions have talked about how humans have an energy field, or aura, surrounding them. Although skeptical scientists refuted this for decades, science is now beginning to catch up with spirituality. Scientists can actually measure light emanating from living beings, so they can measure the human aura, which in scientific terms is known as the biofield. Many medical practitioners around the world use an instrument to evaluate a patient's biofield for the purpose of diagnosing illness. They understand that imbalanced or insufficient light in a person's energy field indicates a physical or emotional problem. The good news? There are ways to balance and increase your light, resulting in greater well-being. For more information, please check out StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Uptrick Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. I am fascinated by this concept of the, the, both science and metaphysics behind the benefits of crystals in our um, ability to heal. Uh, and I want you to talk a little bit more, Tack, about um, how you approach a healing session with an individual when you're going to utilize crystals. Okay. Um, first of all, I, I would like to establish what quartz crystal is and why it has uh, interactive abilities with the human electromagnetic circle of energy. Um, quartz crystal is made of silicon and oxygen, and its formula is SiO2. Uh-huh. Now, this chemical structure is regarded as the perfect order in nature. There is nothing more perfect in its atomic structure than a crystal. Now, they've become essential to our functioning in our modern world as we know they're in our cell phones, our computers, and our watches, and they they emit an uninterrupted frequency, and that enables us to transmit whatever energy we want across it. And okay, so even though, pause, pause for a second. Um, is there something significant about the fact that it's uninterrupted? Oh, yes, because it it doesn't do anything to your signal. So if you're putting um, a sound signal through it, it doesn't mess with it, distort it, and then come out some other way. It takes, okay. It's a great messenger, and you want things to be pure and enhanced uh, as opposed to uh, you know, somehow, you know, decomposed structurally when it is transmitted. And right. okay. crystals, yeah, they, they have this ability to do that, and so we trust them. I mean, you couldn't have laser surgery in hospitals if you didn't have crystals involved transmitting that laser in perfect form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are crystals different if they're made in the laboratory um, versus, say, dug up from the ground? Well, structurally, no, but vibrationally, yes. I know the difference. I can feel the difference. Uh, between them. If, you, if mm-hmm. something, I look at a crystal as suspended breath, 
and that is sometime at some place, something breathed, and as that crystal formed, it capsulized a breath of something at that time. So it has an ancient history to it. It has something that captures the vibrations of the earth and of life on the planet. If the mm-hmm. the colors come from what mineral it's been next to, and that's how sure. it is influenced and maybe affected, never structurally, but only just color-wise and perhaps vibrationally. I mean, sulfur has a different vibration than magnesium. Uh So just from that point. Now, how I use them with people, I take different modalities. First of all, I will take a patient or a client and I will sit down with them and I will ask them what they want to heal. Then they will tell me. Then I will ask them about different modalities because I use essential oils. I use box flowers. I I use uh, sometimes the runes. I use different modalities for healing, and I'll find out where their issue really comes from. Is it centered in their mind? Has mm-hmm. that is that cause? Is it a physical body thing, or is it thought ma- manifested through the body? So I get to to know what that is with them giving me facts about what it is they want to heal, and mm-hmm. then I'll devise a system. Now I had one client who was a, uh, well, he'd been given a restraining order from his wife. He had physically abused her, and uh-huh. he was just a very angry, angry man. And he came to me, and I said, okay, let's work with this. So I would put down the mat that I have, and around it I circle my crystals that I've worked with forever, and there's probably 30 of them, and they're pretty large. They're at least four or five inches uh all each one of them and i'll lay them down and work with that energy and then the client will feel that energy as we talk through it he'll tell me what he's feeling we'll take him back a little bit into the source of what his anger is all about we'll look back into his life he will as he the more he trusts me the more he will reveal the more he reveals the more i can help him excise that So it took us about six weeks of these sessions, and then one day I really saw this dark cloud, this energy lift from him, Mm -hmm. and he felt different. He looked 10 years younger. He Uh felt lighter. You know, and and one thing I don't do after a session is I don't, uh, you know, deconstruct the session with the person. I don't go back over it. I let it set with them and, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, sift down into their body, mind, and soul, and then the next week we'll see how was that. Um, so I didn't talk to him much about that, but he he said his life changed in that moment for him. He no longer, uh, well, he used the word possessed. That's not my word, but he felt uh-huh. possessed by something. So yeah. I said, okay, um, now what do we do? So then now we started to build. We st- I started adding different crystals and different colored I wanted to get his his self-esteem high again. I wanted him to feel strong on the inside. I wanted him to start accepting his feminine side as well as his masculine side. I wanted to make a whole human being out of him and put Uh all those pieces back together. I kind of saw him as scattered, and he would have parts of himself on different shelves. So we brought those all together. And then I found out a few months later he had uh, spoken to his wife. Uh, she was willing to reconsider the restraining order. Mm-hmm. And I even wrote a letter to the judge saying I had witnessed the transformation. And eventually he got back uh, and remarried his wife or, you know, got back into the marriage. So it, it was that was very, very powerful for me because I didn't do anything I simply facilitated. I just allowed the safe space for the healing to take place, and then right. he decided what he was willing to let go of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting that you talk about the, the dark energy. As a healer who's fairly visual, I've seen dark energy um, leave people before. But I, it's funny because you know, he said that he felt like he was no longer possessed. I didn't believe in, like, negative entities. It's like I didn't want to have an attachment to that belief system. But I did see something 
once come out of a person that had a face and it had like a consciousness and it, you know, it exited. Um, so I think there really is something about how we get like this negative dark energy attached to our energy field. Um, yes, and I think it's very true. I think uh, we don't understand or we won't allow ourselves to understand that it's all energy. We're all energy. Everything mm-hmm. is all energy. We're just assembled differently. You know, I think we could solve all the racial problems in the world if we yeah. all just recognize, you know, not that we all come from a 25,000-year-old man in Africa, but that we are indeed just energy. And yeah. we just, you know, and we just have different, we just look differently as we're put together. So but, I think yeah. uh, this is healing for the people. It's healing for the planet. It's freeing it allows us to be what carl sagan said star stuff because we are we are the same thing as stars only packaged differently and when we can bring that energy into our lives we become powerful we become in charge of ourselves and crystals help us do that when we interact with them we reciprocally exchange energy with something from the earth and you cannot get out of that experience without being changed. Interesting, interesting. Um, so you talk about having several crystals that are, say, four or five inches tall. You, in your book, you talk about different shapes of crystals. What are the different shapes? Um, you just go through, through the list of the different shapes that they come in. Yes, yes, I can talk about the different shapes. Um because people have used crystals for centuries and centuries, it's kind of like homeopathy. The way that was created is, it is was through trial and error of different uh, remedies and substances with people having different ailments. And they kept great notes, and then they finally compiled the big homeopathic directory, which is basically just trial and error from a lot of homeopaths, uh, you know, two centuries ago. That's how crystals have kind of developed their shape and their names attached to their shapes. It's through their results. It's through the efficacy of the crystals. So if one person says a crystal is a channeling crystal and it has these, this particular shape, then the, another person can say, all right, well, maybe my channeling abilities would be enhanced if I used that crystal. Okay. There are crystals that do paranormal healing. There are crystals that do more mundane healing. There are crystals, there's a dolphin crystal that you would use if you were healing either your inner child or a mother and child or father and son because they are born together, one carrying the other. So it has that energetic pattern to it. There are um, cathedral crystals. There are uh, just different cluster crystals uh, that you can work with groups. So the crystals have different names because people all through the centuries have found out that this crystal shape works for them when they're trying to do X, Y, or Z. Sure. And that's how those came about. Um, and so we can really trust our ancestors. And it nothing is it, nothing is etched in stone. Ha ha, uh-huh. Benny, I got a joke in just like you. Um, so, <laughs> well played, well played. I never doubted you. Never doubted you. <laughs> um, no, but it's not etched in stone. And, and what might work for one person might not work for another person. So you're free to choose. You don't have to be locked in to rules and regulations. These are just yeah. suggestions of what other people have found. So when we come back, Hack, I'm going to want you to share with us how we can personally choose crystals and how to utilize them for healing. Stay tuned for more with Kak Young. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's Empowering with letters N-R-G dot com. 
Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Defining success and putting minds to work. With the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, Rudy Racine will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values, and attitude in a dynamic way. To learn more about Sarah and her work, visit sarahmain.com. Miss any shows during the week? Don't worry, we've got you covered. With the free Transformation Talk radio app, you'll have access to all of the past week's shows in the palm of your hand. Tune in to Transformation Talk radio anywhere you go with our free app for any of your devices. Check out our app in the App Store and Google Play Store today. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. We are having a conversation today with Cac Young, PhD, MD, DCH. That is triple doctorate, Cac Young who has written 15 books, including her, her most recent, The Art of Healing with Crystals. Now, you've talked, Kak, about how there's science of crystals, there's a long time, long-term long history of utilizing crystals for healing, but you've also mentioned that it's an individual thing. How do we, as individuals, decide which crystals we should bring home with us? Well, I always advise that you plan uh, an afternoon or a whole day, if you can, and go crystal shopping. Find out the metaphysical or the rock and gem uh, stores in your area, and then plan to go visit three or four of them. In the first one, you want to see what is attractive to your eye and get to know them a little bit or get to know uh, uh, the different colors and what appeals to you. And then if something really calls to you, Go ahead and ask to see it, and you want to hold it in your right hand and be very quiet and just see if you have any reaction, and then move it to your left hand. Always Mm -hmm. check both hands and see what you can pick up vibrationally from that crystal, and then make a note. Take a little notepad with you and just make a note. So what what are some of the things that people might experience while holding a crystal? Well, it depends. It depends on how intuitive and sensitive they are. It depends on how in tune to the vibrational world they have allowed themselves to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, I can't say that. It's all very different. Uh, Some people may feel a warmth. Some people may feel a tingling. Some people Mm -hmm. may see the molecules in it move. It all depends on your sensitivity to things. Um, you know, I, I once held a lingam in a jewelry store in Beverly Hills, of all places, and I said, oh, my God, this is alive. And the owner came out and he said, how do you know that? And I said, well, 
it's it's alive. Look, these are moving. He took me in the back room. His name was Fayez Barakat, and he said, nobody has ever seen my stones alive. You have a gift. And that was like one of the times when I went, wow. Anyway, he was a collector and an intuitive, and he was pretty thrilled that I recognized that in his stones. So that was my r- response. But when you're selecting a crystal, go to three or four different stores. Just take notes and try them out. Just, you know, like you're trying on clothes, only try out your crystals, right hand, left hand. Check for the vibration. Check for their aliveness. Check for your responsiveness to them. And then after you've been to three stores, go have a cup of tea and think about them and go over your notes and then make your decision which one you're going to acquire. You might have the budget to buy several. You might just buy one. I suggest buying one or two initially. And then take them home. You want to cleanse them. You want to bathe them in some organic soap, maybe. You want uh-huh. to put them in the sunlight. You want to charge them. You want to charge them in lunar light. Perhaps you want to sound bathe them. There's d- different ways that you can cleanse them and, and acclimate them to your vibration, to your home, and you to it. And listen to your crystal. It has a story to tell. Remember that it was at one time a breath that congealed, and now what does it have to tell you? What does it contain that might have some information that you can use energetically? Mm. So that's how I say people go do that. Yeah. So, Kat, you talk about cleansing crystal, and this is um, ubiquitous, you know, among people who know about crystals, that you need to cleanse them. Why is it we need to cleanse them when we bring them home? Well, because they have been perhaps programmed you know we're going to program them part of the reason that we acquire them is that we will mentally program them crystals have the ability to transmute and transmit energy what they don't have is a mind so they can't decide what they're going to transmit or transmute or amplify but we do that we decide what their purpose is and we select that you're never mean to a crystal you don't order it around but you just tell it what you want it to accomplish that's its job, and then it will transmit that energy from one place to another. That's how I use them in healing. I stir them up, and I tell them, okay, your job here is to help this person release whatever is blocking them. That's your job, mm-hmm. so let's go. And, and and then I will get them working together, and they create a field around someone that can feel like it's lifting them up. It can feel like it's bathing them. It just depends on what their sensitivity is to the energy field the crystals are giving out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's science. That's not hocus pocus. So mm-hmm. when someone picks that crystal, you want to be attuned to it, and then you want to take it home and get to know it. Uh, pretend you're inviting it to dinner or coffee and just listen to it. Um, you know, people who thought that I have, you know, a stone loose in my brain uh, have done this mm-hmm. and then come back to me and said, uh, that was an extraordinary experience. I had no uh-huh. idea that I could talk to a rock, you know. And it, it, it's amazing when we allow ourselves to be in tune with the energies of the earth, especially ones that are ancient like crystals. Mm-hmm. So I've got a question for you about, um, like, for me personally, there are two types of crystals I'm really drawn to. Labradorite, I seem to not be able to get enough Labradorite into my home. Um, I, I just absolutely adore Labradorite. And also Amethyst, I love Amethyst. And I'm not sure if it's just because of color or, you know, is there a reason why we might be attracted to certain types of crystals? Absolutely. It's all energy. It's all vibration. You know, and the beauty of an Amethyst is that it's it's a healing stone. It's called the All Healer, the International Healer. And it really just bathes you in a whole light of calmness, of soothing. It's like lavender is an essential oil that does that, too. It's one of the key Uh oils uh, that allows you to just kind of go, aha. And and so the amethyst is there to support you. It's there to uh, connect you with your purpose, if you will, and your your actions. It, It helps calm the mind. I think that's why we're attracted to it because it's sort of like a natural tranquilizer in the environment. Interesting. Interesting. And then, of course, there's lapidolite. I was thinking of, you know, that color um, and lapidolite. That's got lithium in it, doesn't it? 
I th- yes, I think it does. I'd have to look at the chemical structure, but yeah, I believe it does. And, yeah. you know, different stones, uh, it's, it's like you go into the forest and you'll find every medicine is a derivative from natural things in the forest. And then they're uh-huh. taking the labs and made into something else. So why couldn't those energies, those chemicals, those properties be healers as well? They come from the earth. Isn't it right. pretty much the right. same thing? I, I love that notion, Tack. It's, it's almost like that since they are sort of programmable, um, they absorb the energy around it so that if they're in nature, they come from nature, and there are healing plants, for instance, in nature, then you figure they, they've probably picked up some, some programming based on that. They have, you know, and from different parts of the world. Like, you know, I have Brazilian crystals, and they have a very different feel to them than some crystals I have from other parts of the world, too. And huh. you never know whether stores have brought them in from, uh, you know, Australia or where they've come from and what right. vibration they have. That's why you have to check them out. That's why you want to suss them out and figure out what they've, uh, you know, that's why going to any of the gem and mineral shows is really a trip because you can, you know, first of all, you wear really comfortable shoes because you're going to be walking all day. <laughs> really comfortable shoes. And uh, and take your water with you and then go and you can test out crystals and hold them and really just have an entire energetic fair all your own. And it's yes. just a remarkable thing. You know, uh, my animals, whenever they're ill, I'll put them in a basket lined with crystals, and they, they don't want to get out of the basket. They're like, oh, Mommy, this is so cool. I love this with the <laughs> vibration. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I, you know, I've got kitties that just, you know, then I can't leave the basket out too long because then they'll fight over it, you know. I want to be in the basket. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> and that sort of wrecks the harmony in the house. <laughs> it was interesting for me, Cac, um, you know, I, I – I, I know that there is something more to crystals than, you know, my knowledge of it. But when I went crystal shopping, I thought, I'm just going to look for the, the pretty ones that I'm after. But there would be some booths at some of these big shows that I would walk right past, even though they had things that looked pretty. It just felt off. What is that about? Well, your eyes, when they see something beautiful – there's healing right there because beauty in and of itself is a healer. So mm, if you yeah. are not, you know, if you look at something um, something that is, isn't particularly attractive to your mind, you walk away from it. You're, you're not going to want to be in that room. Uh, if, if a room is very, very cluttered, you feel all kind of like yeah. caved in and you don't want to be there. Right. If it's open and free and wonderful, you like it there. So it's the same vibration only with crystals. And you can be attracted to the simplest, silliest, most unattractive crystal that you just fall in love with, or you can be attracted to a six-foot beauty. It uh-huh. just matters on your own sensibilities and what you like. But if you're attracted to something that's beautiful, go kiss it, you know, bring it into your life. I mean, what a gift. What a gift. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, We have to go to another quick break, but stay tuned for more with Cat Young. Don't you give up. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, 
and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. What does the word healing mean? Many think that healing merely means eliminating symptoms. However, based on my many years as a healer, I have a much broader perspective on the word. Healing can manifest in a variety of ways, including having physical problems resolved, becoming more emotionally centered, experiencing better relationships, gaining greater clarity, and feeling more spiritually connected. True healing always includes some level of transformation. Whatever form healing takes, there is one commonality, an improvement in quality of life. To me, the highest form of healing goes beyond aligning with wellness. It comes from recognizing our soul's voice and allowing it to speak through us. And in that sense, don't we all yearn to heal into our wholeness? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Are you traveling most of your day? Do you want to take Transformation Talk Radio with you anywhere you go? Well, guess what? There's an app for that. Just go to the App Store on your Apple device or the Google Play Store on your Android and search Transformation Talk Radio. Catch all of our live shows no matter where you are. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to the Christian Church Show. You know, Cactus Hour is flying by. Before I ask any more questions, we can't chat any, any more. I want you to share with our listeners how they can connect with you. What's your website? My website is CAC Young. That's a K-A-C, Kitchen Apple Charlie, CACYoung.com, and you can connect there. Um, and I have all my subjects that I cover in, in tabs, so you can just click on that and learn more. Great, great. And I really do love your book as well. It's called The Art of Healing with Crystals. Now, you and I on the break were talking about how, um, how when I was shopping for granite, which, of course, is stone, uh, I went into this one store where it was a bunch of stuff from China, and I could not even, like, touch it. I couldn't look through it. I had to leave the store because it felt like somehow, intuitively, it just, I felt like it had somehow been dishonored. How is stone and crystal mine? Well, and that's a really good question. When you become, when you want to really acquire a lot of crystals or you want to work with them as a healer, one of the things to do is research what mine they came from, where they came from, and how do those people mine the crystals? Do they dynamite them and blow them up, or do they hand chisel them out of the earth? And I think... I prefer the ones that have been hand-chiseled and cared for. I want to know that the person picking my crystals, uh, you know, has love for them at the same time. I kind of like to keep that as the main emotion going on, if you will. Um, and I'm sure I have crystals that have been blown out of the earth. I, I, I don't know, but um, I want to just respect crystals as much as they respect me and i feel that my crystals do they serve me they take care of me they do what i need to do and so i reciprocate you know i i just treat them with honor respect and love fabulous you know in your book you talk about this um, trip that you took with crystals to egypt can you share with our listeners a little bit about that Oh, that was, yeah, that was so amazing. It was after I had started my study of crystals, um, and I had collected quite a few, but I have a psychic friend in Cincinnati that I was doing a television show with, Patricia Michelle, and she arranged uh, a a trip to Egypt. And my friend, because I was producing uh, General Hospital, I brought along my friend Jackie Zeman, and she was also very intuitive and uh, spiritually minded. So we went to Egypt on this trip, and Patricia and her husband, Keith, 
had arranged us to meet metaphysicians in Egypt. We did a chakra tour of the Nile, starting at the bottom, working with the root chakra, because the pyramids were all built according to the energies of the chakras. And so as we went into each of the temples, the Valley of the Kings, Edna, Edfu, uh, Aswan, and uh, up into Cairo, we did cleansings for our root chakras with the ancients and using ancient healing techniques. So we all got this wonderful chakra bath uh, while we were sailing up the Nile. And then when we got to Giza, when we stayed in, in Cairo, uh, we toured into the back areas of the museums, and we got to crawl into the pyramids uh, in the middle of the night twice and really wow. experience them with nobody there. I know. And so I took my crystals the second night, and I said to the group we were with, all right, let's do an initiation. I want these crystals, um, you know, for ba- lack of a better word, I want them sort of baptized in this crystal energy and this pyramid energy because the pyramids were never burial chambers. They were uh, houses used to generate energy and for rituals and initiation. So I wanted that, what Mm -hmm. went on within those walls in my crystals, and I told them, I said, okay, just soak all this up because there's the rest of your life you're going to be using this energy. And I left two crystal clusters there. I had been given them, and that's a whole other uh, conversation. I'd been given these these three clusters, and I left one in the king's chamber down a grate where I still believe it is. And then the next day, I had to borrow a spoon from the dining room of our hotel, and I was able to get up and touch the sphinx. And uh-huh. under the left paw of the sphinx, I buried another crystal cluster. And wow. then I. Uh, yeah, and the guards were, you know, they were really in tune with what we were doing, and I said, this is for world healing, this is world peace, you know, in uh-huh, here. So uh-huh. I dug up a little sand. I mean, you know, what's a little sand after 5,000 years, right? <laughs> so I did that, <laughs> left the crystal there, took the spoon back, left it back in the dining room. Um, so it, I just be, am able now to connect, and so is everybody else, to the king's chamber with crystals and to the left paw of the sphinx. And you can connect with that energy across the ley lines and pick up those energetic points from across the world. And that's available healing to everybody. And even the person who gave me the the clusters, I still have the third one, um, she's able to connect as well and do healing because it's just, you know, we're just all connected anyway. So it, it, it was a beautiful time, and I collected gemstones as I went up the Nile, not even with any thing in mind, really, but then I had it made into a necklace. I had it set in 14 karat gold, and that's the healing necklace that I wear when I work with a lot of my clients because it takes me back to that energy in those times, which was so powerful and life-changing. Interesting. So what is it about the Great Sphinx and um, the pyramids that are supposed to be so healing? Well, because underneath the Sphinx and the pyramid are waterways. Underneath the Sphinx, really round down deep, is a bed of rose crystal. And underneath the pyramids, and they're discovering that now. You can, you can Google this. There's uh, experiments and people digging for water now. It's been kind of hidden for many, many years. But um, anyway, the... Pyramids themselves were batteries back then. If the fact that you cannot get a razor blade through the stones, it is so uh, packed together succinctly, you cannot get a razor blade. That's because they filled them with water. And when the outsides, of course, all the limestone has been taken off and all Uh the crystal tips have been removed, but when that was activated, it was used as a battery with other elements inside. And it's very interesting to me in history that right after Napoleon invaded and took a lot of the spoils from Egypt and the pyramids, right after he went back to France, there was an enormous amount of patents for electromagnetic devices that were patented in France. And that's probably where a lot of this stuff went. And, of course, nobody knows because there weren't video cameras back then to catch the thieves. But, you know, the plunder became things that France could then patent and use for the rest of the world. But, you you know, in my book, I go into why it was a battery and how it was and give other links you can do further research. 
Yeah, and again, I want to um, mention the title of your book, The Art of Healing with Crystals, and uh, your website, kakyoung.com, K-A-C-Y-O-U-N-G.com. Um, Kak, it's been a pleasure having you on today, and um, I hope at some point I have an opportunity to meet you in person. Do you ever make it up to Seattle? Oh, all the time. Sure. I'm there at least once a year. So we'll definitely connect for sure, for sure. Great. And um, I thank you for joining us here today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you for having me on. Bye. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www.StellarReflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.Transformation. Talkradio.com.